Hey, it's Anne from Anne Moyer Singing. Uh, some of you will see me online as phases uh, when I go around the karaoke servers. Um, anyhow, today I wanted to take a minute to talk about this tool that I use uh, right over here called Fritcher. Um, most of my students are thrown this and they really want to understand what it is that they're looking at because this is a really a key tool in understanding how you're, w when you are effectively using resonance. Um, or at least in the bel canto system that you're effectively using your head resonance. So this is different from nasal resonance as this is having to do with using your sinus spaces in the way that I teach. Now I'm going to switch over here to this. So basically, as I said, this is Fritcher. Let me describe what you're looking here, looking at here in the software. Um, so basically on the far left hand side, we have these bars that are bouncing up and down. They are blue at the bottom and yellow in the middle. That's just pure dB, um, and that's measuring each channel because I am using a two-channel microphone here. Um, and then the main body of that space is the range of human hearing. So at the bottom, the first mark is uh, 100 hertz, and at the top of the scale is 15,000 hertz. That's the range of human hearing. And most of the time when we talk and as you can see when I'm uh, right now here I'm kind of deliberately talking with just my chest voice and just my larynx and you can see that most of the energy is down at the bottom of the chart and that is absolutely normal for what most of you will see when you load this application up and when you start to sing you'll see a lot of the same thing this is what laryngeal sound sounds like. Now, <clears throat> uh, I mean, if I play a note, you'll see that there's a primary set of sounds. There's a short bar and a long bar. And then you'll see that that short bar and the long bar get start to have echoes above them. So what ends up, this is something called acoustic decay. So if I make a, a pitch at 400 hertz, there's a copy of that pitch at 800 hertz, at 1200 hertz, and so on up, but each one's a little weaker. So 400 hertz is down near the bottom of the chart. Human hearing goes up to 15,000, the top of the chart. So anything in the orchestra and most of the choir when you're in a church is all singing at 1500 hertz and below. I'm going to pause this for a second because I want to bring up a chart. All right, we're back here. And so basically, this is the range of human hearing. And if you go down to the it ends at the, the gray ones, there are really outside of what we can possibly hear. Some people can hear up to 20,000 hertz. That's why it stops at the top of the octave 10. Now, most of the time when we're singing, a soprano is going to be playing around an octave six. So if you look at the middle of octave six, that's 1396 hertz. Middle of octave seven, that's 2700. And that's up in whistle tone for most folks. So most singing between octave two and octave six, which is where most music that we write tends to be, um, is running somewhere between 100 hertz and, in this case, what, uh, well, just under 2,000 hertz because we're going to top off at octave 6 because not a lot of people go to octave 7. So that is also the number of flaps per second that your vocal folds have to do. So that way down in octave 2, I mean, it's flapping at really, really slow rates and a lot of air is going through. And at the upper end, it's vibrating very, very quickly. And so, you know, it's there's a, there's a lot of manipulation going on there. Anyhow, most of the voice happens at 1500 hertz and below, or most of the music that we're going to do. So why do we care about all this up at 15,000 hertz? Well, there's an operatic um, method, there's an operatic thing called squillo, and it's a kind of projection. And volume and projection are not the same thing. 
because I can be on a stage and I can scream, ah, and all this stuff down at the bottom of the chart, it's going to decay at a particular rate. I can speak very loudly on a stage and it's only going to get maybe 30 feet, maybe 50 feet, maybe. Big crowd, not a chance. Now, part of learning how to do um, the Bill Canto method that I teach has to do with understanding resonance. <clears throat> and so you can get kind of a, a jump start into it by using this really whiny voice. <coughs> Look what happens at the middle of the chart there. <coughs> a lot of primary energy is being made in that space. That's a particular whiny sound. No, I don't like it. No, no, no. And that that is like the most annoying sound of the human ear. It's actually like one of the most irritating. At 3,500 hertz is like the most irritating thing. Now, between 2,800 hertz and 3,400 hertz is where squealo starts to come in. And that's if you're singing, you've got hard palate vibrations, hard palate resonance. Ah, that starts to come in in there. And so you'll feel that in your teeth. There's other spaces and other manipulations you can do to make it fill in even more. And it's going all the way up the top of the chart with the echoes. And it's not just that I'm overloading the microphone. I've got compression on on those things, so I'm not going to overload it. Now, so when we're singing, even if we're not singing loud, slow down, you crazy child, I'm getting activation up in the middle of this because I'm using the resonance part of bel canto. And it doesn't matter whether I'm doing it high. Just before our love got lost, you said, hello, darkness, my old friend. Now, I don't get as much top end activation at my lower end, and that's normal, too. You'll find as, as you if you look at this and you practice it, that that basement at 25, 2800 hertz is going to stay. And you'll get this nice, meaty stuff, fluffy stuff at the top. And then as you start to go down in your pitch, that top will start to come down and down and down. And you'll come down just to that core a little bit between 28 and 34, maybe a little more. And what this does, because of acoustic decay, just mathematically, this hangs out in the air longer than other sounds that the rest of the orchestra or choir makes. Now, for an opera singer, this is fantastic. I can make sound and have these 50 people behind me playing instruments and the whole audience hears me. If I'm in a choir, that's not quite so good because your job in a choir is to blend. And so you have to learn how to be able to meter this and not use all of it. And so, you know, there's, there's, there's things that this method is really meant for and things that it's really not ideal for. This is really kind of meant for, for musical theater, soloists, buskers, um, anybody who's going to be performing. And especially this is one of the things about this is this means you can perform in large spaces without a microphone. I regularly perform in 600 and 1,000 seat spaces without using any amplification for my voice. And everybody in the place hears me just fine. And that's because of using this technique. And it doesn't matter whether I'm whispering or whether I'm shouting. I can do this resonance technique at 80, 85 decibels, which is the, you know, I'm right now I'm talking to you and it's generating exactly, we're floating between 73 and 80 decibels. I got a little meter right here. And so I'm going to keep that level and it'll be um, something like, Wise men say only fools. And that's not breaking 82 decibels. And all of that resonance is the stuff that's being heard up in the mezzanine. So this is why I use this tool. So when my students are doing the exercises I give them, um, that they can see, hey, it's working. I can see right there that I'm making the right kind of sound. Because one of the drawbacks to this kind of singing is that what you hear is different than what everybody else hears. And so you kind of hear this kind of overlay to everything you sing because the microphone is mounted in the speaker cabinet. 
And so you hear sympathetic vibrations in your skull, in your ear. So you have to kind of learn to retrain your ears to what the right sound is and what it feels like. So you, when you're working on this, you either have to work with a teacher so you can get live feedback, or you need to be really diligent about recording yourself and paying attention to what you're doing, making notes, and then going back and listening to your recordings and try to say, okay, I did this at this spot and this at this spot, and then try and narrow in on what works the best. Anyhow, this is just part of the whole system. It's only three parts, breath, relaxed larynx, and stuff you're doing up in the sinuses. But man, it is a very counterintuitive thing for most people to do. It takes a couple of months for somebody to learn how to do it. And then it takes a couple of years to learn how to master it. And um, But once you learn how to master it, you can use it to sing anything. I, I don't sing any other way. This is just so much fun. Anyhow, thanks for listening to me babble. Uh, I'll clean this up and edit it and make it a little shorter, but not by much because I don't like I don't like correcting things. I like just I like live performance. That's part of why I do what I do. This is all I'm I don't care about studio work. I'm I'm all for the live show. So anyhow, thank you for joining me. I'll see you online. Peace.